boys, dudes, what is up? So today we have a Kia K5. Again, we're gonna be doing limo on everything but the windshield. Nothing on the windshield today, but that's okay, because it's gonna look cool. How you doing? Had a little hiccup. Hopefully that has been resolved. It was nothing on my end though. Excellent connection. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> Good God. This stuff is so much fun. Everything is working perfectly. You go live, it doesn't tell you anything's wrong, and then just everybody says it's frozen. That's a shame too, because I, I had somebody call in literally right when I started, so we were talking to a client. So we're just gonna try it again. Looks like everything's working, sweet. Nobody's gonna get notifications now. That's all right, but you should be refreshing vigorously anyways to make sure that you get in here. We good? Oh my gosh. I think so. Where is my... Yes, we are working. Yay! <laughs> Hey, Tracy. Uh, it is. Uh, these things are going to be, I have thought they are going to be popular uh, when I did a couple of them. I didn't realize this was more of an entry-level Kia, I think. But yeah, K5s, man. They have some decent styling on them for what they are. They're, uh, it's going to look good. I like the color, too. I like everything other than black in here. Whenever we have something that's just, like, contrast, it's good. It's good stuff. So... Uh, I have no idea what happened, so I just restarted the whole computer again and just set everything back up and started. So, um, yeah, uh, we're going to get started here pretty quick. Um, we don't have a ton of work today, and he's going to be picking this up a little later, so we do have some time to play around with the K5, but in a good way, right? Like, things that aren't going to damage it. <laughs> so, um, I do have a soap bar. Uh, this... This is one of those things that's been asked a bunch of times. So what I figured I might do is do like half on the back window, half soap bar, and then half like dryer sheet or something and just do a comparison. That would make a pretty good video. Um, we could do 50-50 comparisons of like other things too, like dry shrink prep. I think we've done dryer sheets and dry shrink prep too. But soap bars... Uh, soap bars aren't really talked about very much, and it's something I've actually, for whatever reason, never used, so. Uh, is that the K5 that called yesterday? Uh, I don't know. I don't, no, I don't think so. I think it was a little bit earlier. Um, I think it was earlier in the week. I don't remember yesterday very well. Somebody, did somebody, somebody booked on stream? Maybe it was. No, it wasn't. Could have been. I always two stage this. I always two stage this car. Made me learn bottom loading. Uh, this car made me learn bottom loading. That bottom seal is a pain. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, the first one of these that I did, I actually pulled the seals. I was. I was. I don't know. Chat made me really nervous about this car, but I haven't had any issues with it. I think one of the most frustrating parts about this car is honestly the front quarter windows. They're just like. Just a little tedious to cut out, but I figured out a, a way that makes them a little bit more consistent. So, and you also have this third brake light uh, that actually needs to be unbolted a little bit. I know, tools, right? Two stage needs shrink, bottom load does not so often, both good installs, why? Um, it, so it's really about distributing the film as evenly as you can. And then that bottom edge, uh, you still can get stuff to pop up when you bottom load. But water, I think, sits along that bottom edge. So for two staging, um, when you have water sitting along that bottom edge, it's constantly like, it, it's keeping that wet and it wants to pop fingers up that way. When you take out the seal, you can just force everything down harder, I think, and just more evenly and then you don't have that seal in the way either. So it makes it a little bit easier that way, but I'd still shrink, but hey, that's me.
What's up, Barbero? How you doing? Cutting some hair? I haven't checked out your stream in a minute. I'll have to. I'll have to see what you've changed about it. It was uh, it was one of the fun ones to look at. There's there's a handful of people that I pop in here and there, and I always like to see what they've changed. Like Sushi Dragon on Twitch, he's a he's another one who always just goes outrageous with his streams. A lot of fun. So, all right, let's uh, let's get started here. Unfortunately, my live stream has been killed. <laughs> I don't know. I like literally. I didn't change anything else. Maybe it was just the server it was uploading to, but I've had very consistent internet here, thankfully, uh, through the summertime, um, and it didn't say it was dropping any frames. Everything looked like it was good. Even reset the computer, which always makes things run a little bit smoother. So, let's get started here. We got we got some work to do. Um, really that I want to start with the third brake light. Them k 5 I know, there's going to be a whole bunch more. This is like, this is almost like the Fusion, I think. Fusions, there's just so many of them. Now, there, there's always like, you know, I started getting chargers, just get, had a whole ton of those, had a whole ton of Fusions. Just like those, like, slightly nicer, popular cars that just everybody owns, and then they also want to get them tinted. K5, that fits the bill real nice. GoPro. Yeah! Okay, sweet. So, um, all right, we're gonna make a short little video here. Um, we're gonna do a K5 brake light removal. So this is one of the few cars that I actually will take any type of a socket wrench too. <laughs> um, so when you have a brake light like this, you're gonna see something similar on Audi, on BMW. Um, there's a lot of cars that have a nice dot matrix border that go around a brake light. And in those cases, I'll usually just cut around that. I don't feel the need to virtually disassemble, uh, disassemble a headliner and stuff like that to try and take it out. You don't have to on Audis on BMWs, there's, there's tricks to getting them out uh, without taking anything else apart, really. Um, and on the K5, uh, it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. So what we have buried in here is just a little quarter, quarter inch socket. Uh, this one, I have an 11 mil. I think it's a 10 mil that's up there. I, you know, in good old mechanic fashion, lose the 10 mils. Uh, so 11 mil still will just grab on fine. So we need to loosen this up. So there are, ooh, you know, let me grab some type of light here. That way you guys can see it a little bit better because it's going to be a little bit dark in there. All right, so let's brighten this up. So you can uh, also remove uh, the headrest to get back in there a little bit better. I probably should, and we might even do this. But anyways, you've got three little push pins here, and Kia made this super simple to do. You balance this light. You just pull down where those push pins are, and then you will free up the headliner enough to get this guy, and I think the way we can maybe do this, so you guys can see a little bit better. Excuse me, this is gonna be a little tough to kind of balance here, but I'll do my best, something like that. So, you're gonna reach underneath here, and then, oh God, yep, two seconds, let me lower the seat. Yep, lower the seat, remove the headrest. That'll make that uh, infinitely easier to get to. Sweet. So now I got some space, yay. So there's three bolts up here, uh, right here. There's one, there's two, there's three. You don't have to pull this out. 
You can if you really want to. But I'll sneak my wrench in here and then just do this a whole bunch. And you're just dropping it down a little bit, nothing crazy. I'll push back up in this spot because it's a little awkward otherwise, but you're just loosening up enough. Should work. Slow going on quarter turns. Oh, no, that did work. Cool. Go to the next one. I didn't realize how loose that one got. There we go. Now it's coming down. There's two. Much better. Yay, so now we have room. So that's really enough room to get back in here. So you can pull this down. Ugh. Slide the tent up there, and then you don't actually have to take it out. Cannon. So, all right, GoPro. So I didn't want to take it all the way out because trying to line those bolts back up is based on your own little skill, trying to get that little thing up there and tighten it back up. No, thank you, I'm good. But loosening them up a little bit gives you plenty of space to pull that brake light down a little bit, slide the film underneath, squeegee it out, and you'll get a really, really clean job. So that part is up to you. But that is how you get the brake light far enough out of the way so you can tint this whole back window without it being a pain. So if you found this helpful, give this a like, comment. Do you take it all the way out? Do you not? Uh, do you have any other tips? This is going to be a video, so thank you. Have a good one. <laughs> all right, let's keep going because we actually have a full car to tint. Uh, we're going to be posting a video tomorrow um, that's going to be uh, about, for those of you that saw, this little, this little guy right here, sharpening squeegees. That'll be going up probably tomorrow, tomorrow at like 9. Small front quarters are a pain. <laughs> oh, you know it. Um, talk about cutting your editing time. Yeah, that makes it way easy, right? How's the baby? How old now? Uh, he actually just turned nine months. Whoa! <laughs> it works! Where's my other tape? Jorge Sandoval super chatted five dollars. SpongeBob testing, 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 testing. <laughs> Jorge with a five, thank you. Testing, testing. It works. SpongeBob. Uh, fun fact: was not allowed to watch SpongeBob when I was little. It was sad, sad times. Um, I misplaced. Where did I? I have, ah, are you kidding? Oh, I did, I put it over there. How did I put it over there? Oh, hey, uh, so Sun Distributing, thank you for this, by the way. I didn't, I didn't thank you for this. I saw this was sitting there, and for some reason I thought you also brought in coffee, but you left a mug here. This is awesome. I love these mugs. These are so cool. They look so clean. So thank you for that. Also, um, if I owe you, uh, I'm assuming I owe you for that ceramic, too, so... We can square up on that, that's fine. <laughs> I realized after you left, I was like, oh shit, they didn't pay for that. Uh... <laughs> A lot going on, yes. I managed to clean up some boxes too. 
I put the shelving on the other side. So as you can see, it still has to be cleaned up a little bit, but all the boxes finally are put away. I had some time to do some inventory today. It's okay, I heard I have 500 rolls of glass. <laughs> I guess we'll square up one another way. That's hopefully finally getting, uh, getting made today. So these are rubber seals and they're pretty clean. Um, so we tape for redundancy at this point. Just to ensure because there's always something there. You know, this is brand new. This, when it rolls off the lot, is used. This stuff, oh, this stuff is tough, though. It's got a really nice finish, though. This, these panels, though, I was wondering if it will stick to these or not. Hey, that's not Lowe's tape. You're right, it's not. <laughs> this is uh, polyethylene tape from Uline. Uh, they dropped it off yesterday, too. Um, Sun Distributing did. He said it might be helpful, so we're playing around with some different ones. I'm not sure this is the way to go. So it seems to stick kind of, but in some spots it doesn't. It's not really grabbing onto the panel much at all. So good for the seals. I don't think so much for all the panels. But definitely worth a try. So let's grab the mighty Lowe's tape. See how that works on this. Easier to pull too. It's another, like it's a small quality of life thing there. But we'll see if this sticks to it any better. Time to get more tuck tape? I think so. So, let's see. How does this work here? Actually, better. <laughs> the Lowe's wins on the door panel. So it'll, it, it's got not a ton more grip, but enough. No more carpet shield? No, we do. So on door panels that are slippery, what I've been doing is I've been taking uh, a tape like this, and we're usually just putting it on the sides, but we've been putting it on the bottom. Um, as a way for the carpet shield to grab onto, which is kind of like a lot. So if you have a, I don't need, see it's just, it's about cost too. So if you can find a double-sided tape that'll stick the same way, but it's not gonna cost you very much to get, then you could do that and then use a cheaper plastic to cover up the doors. Like you don't need to use something sticky at that point because all the stickiness would be on a tape like this laying it across the top of the door. Or in that case, you could use any number of things. Like somebody was telling me about using, like, you know, you use trash bags, shower curtains, anything that's like halfway durable, reusable. Just you stick it and then you peel it off, you hang it up, and then you reuse it. You don't always have to throw it out. But we're slowly getting there. We still prepping? Yeah, we got. There's like residue there. We got all day to prep. He's actually like yesterday, not picking this up till like five o'clock. Just dropped it off. We have all day. Matt made me more money than any, any college degree. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. Yeah, you can make good money tinting. 
Tinning is a full career, and you can own a full tinting business. Absolutely. Or you can do it as a side hobby on the weekends, any which way you want to cut it. Every, the whole job landscape is changing so rapidly, too, right now. It's everything. Everything's changing. It's going through a big remote change. How much is the low tape? This stuff is like 10 bucks a roll, I think. So, a little bit, a little bit more accessible. I don't think it, we'll have to do a direct comparison. I might have enough tuck tape to do, <laughs> I knew that was gonna be the next question. Home Depot tape, I haven't looked. I'm assuming they do. It's uh, sheathing tape, so if they're smart, yeah, it's, this stuff is not hard to, to make, from what I understand. At least I don't think it is. Maybe we'll get a Glass Aid version here, eventually. But I don't have any yet, so, hey. Low as it is. Menards? I don't know. Just check. Uh, yes, this is more affordable. I'm wondering where I put my... I had, like, a small amount left, but maybe it got kind of thrown aside when we cleaned everything up. I don't want to go searching behind the curtain for that. But this is definitely a door panel where uh, carpet seal will just fall off, so, hey. <laughs> wow. Watching last night your videos, you getting some weight? Dang. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You can get Glass Aid brand for $7.99. It's pretty specific. All right, let's roll these up. Oh, this fell off. That's no good. Stay. I like the feel of this tape. I really do. I think it's good around the sides. Okay. Let's not, let's not blast the radio. One more. Out of both of these, yeah. It's gonna be Lowe's. Um, Home, Home Depot probably has their own and any number of other places probably have their own and then people are saying Tyvek that's again these are all like mostly sheathing tape so tuck tape this it's a sheathing tape so sheathing tape pretty awesome works well now we wipe off the doors Prep the back window, glass aid it, and then we, we get started cutting. We give it a shot. That's what we're trying to do more now. We'll do comparisons. That's all good. I'll spend, I'll spend your hard earned super chats and like I already have. We we like heat guns. Um, different tapes, different things, like, I don't know. I mean, I, all those things across the wall are just like different things that I bought so we could try them out. We are here to find the best practical solutions to everything. 
Might have spent a little on a TV here, so there are, there's also that. These hooks are the worst, I tell you. They look so clean, but they are they are not very strong. It's sad. You can you can't even put like the sprayer on it without it falling off. So I use them for these, but sad. We might have to relocate that keg. <laughs> We might have to put it right there. So, oh yeah, we also bought a soap bar. There's that. Depot has QEP tape for $7. Ah, interesting. Lowe's is like, I, I'm not one to go to Lowe's super often, but then... Where I moved to, there's a Lowe's uh, very, very close. So I've been going to that just for convenience. Usually it was always Home Depot. But I think the carpet shield was just slightly more affordable at the at Lowe's. Like if you buy four at a time, it's like forty thirty eight to like forty dollars. You buy four of them at a time, and it's like thirty two. Now we'll try the Home Chapo brand. We look forward to the Home Chapo brand. <laughs> One hundred K Tin Studio Tri Edge giveaway. Yeah, maybe in like a year. <laughs> We're at like eighty five now. It is it actually starting to grow a little bit faster, but it's still it's still slow going. Once once we hit a hundred K then we retire. We did it. The 100K. The, the goal that big channels hit with the secondary channel in like five seconds. It only took me forever to get this far. <laughs> One roll of glass aid giveaway. Whoa. Maybe like half. Maybe a half roll. We'll roll it down. What watch? Uh, it's the uh, the Galaxy Watch. It's the one with the the turny dial. It's not like I've had this one for I think a couple of years now. It's actually been really helpful for when people call while I'm streaming, because I used to get all my phone calls through my headset. Now. Uh, I can answer them here, and you guys can kind of hear them. So that's cool. We put people on blast. Okay. I need to prep this. So we'll do, we'll do, we've been doing heat gun comparisons. Let's do, I'm a healthy visitor. Uh -huh. Okay. We're setting up for another video. See, we just, we're just trying to get videos here right now. That's all we're trying to do today. All right, so we're going to shoot another simple comparison video here. We'll, we'll pick up on this a little later, but wow. OK, so a lot of people have asked about dryer sheets versus soap bars. Um, I've heard Irish Spring uh, is a pretty good one to use. I haven't ever used a soap bar on a back window. I don't know why. It's, uh, it's convenient as all heck to get one. I just haven't. I never remember it. And then finally, oh yeah, that video. Let's, so we're going to do it today. So we're going to do 50-50. 
We're going to do 50% dryer sheet. This is a Snuggles dryer sheet, and we're going to do 50% soap bar. Now, I haven't ever prepped a back window with soap bar. I've heard you can do them wet or dry. I don't think it matters a ton, I guess, but the dry would save you a little bit of time. So I guess that's what we'll try today. So we'll do wet on one side, dry on the other, wait for this to dry. We'll throw some film over there and we'll see if it's any better or if it works. Maybe this will be a disaster. So we are gonna have to unbox the Irish Spring. Oh, how exciting. But first, if you're gonna prep your back window, one, make sure the surface is cleaned. So we took a squeegee, we squeegeed the whole thing, we put our glass aid tape around there, and then we're going to use this. So what I do is I suds this up, I spray the sheet a little bit, I suds it up, and then I lightly mist my back window. And then I take that and I wipe a generous amount of dryer sheet over half. That's all you have to do. So the, the pain about waiting for it to dry is just that. You have to wait for it to dry. So you can see it's already starting to dry on colder days. If you use a lot of water, especially, uh, it just takes longer to dry. But you always got to make sure that's dry before you throw film over it or else you get this half, half tacky area. And then also you have lots of dryer sheet residue on your hands and that's gross. So Irish Springs, moisture blast. Smells good. Smells clean. Ooh, looks nice. This isn't green like their normal bars are, so yeah, that's, I guess, slightly different version of it. I don't know. But, I don't know. I'm guessing you can just take this and just wipe this over. I haven't really done this. Oh, that's like a, that's kind of nasty. I wouldn't like that at all. You. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna wipe that off and we're gonna wet this down. I'm going to do that wet. <laughs> Yuck. Now let's wipe off gross soap off our back window so we can actually do this correct 50-50. I've heard you can do a few things. You can put it uh, in a rag and wipe it down so you kind of get the suds. You get the suds from the soap. I just, I heard people doing it dry, so I had to check out what that was like. I wouldn't advise to do that at all. <laughs> so we're going to wet it down like the other side. I was hoping, I was saving some time. So we're going to do it like, like normal then. So we'll just wet it down. Um, that's a little bit thin. Is there a faster way to do this? because there's this curve to the bar. Do you just have to like kind of wear it down until it's good or put it in a towel and just suds it up? Like what, what are we doing here? I guess we're just gonna go over the whole thing, put some generous lines from the soap bar. The more that you wear this in, the more that it's gonna curve obviously, but fresh soap bar kind of seems like a mess to me. So please, comments. Let's do this. Let's figure out a better way to do this. That's gross. Now everything is all soapy. I like my dryer sheet method, but we probably can spray it and like rub it around a little bit. So the idea Use the rag. I wiped it off with the rag. <laughs> so we're going to smear it all over like we put it in a rag or something. There you go. So if you're going to use a soap bar, probably some type of applicator is, uh, is going to be important because I'd imagine you want it to look as even as anything else is. So we have some little chunky bits behind. We'll just go back over that. I am glad we have so much extra time. I think you wet your hand with the soap and then rub your hand on the glass. 
Uh, that or probably a rag or something. But in all my years of tinting, nobody has ever been very detailed about it in my group. So I blame you guys. Make better contact. Ooh, we got a fly. Aw, we missed it. So we're going to leave that sitting. That's going to dry. Uh, that's looking more even. 50-50 dryer sheet, soap bar with a fly in between. So in the meantime, let's work on the rest of this, and then we'll get back to it. Um, we need 5%, so let's go find that. Maybe put it in a DSP bag. Something like that would probably be very helpful. A rag, an applicator, I think I've heard a sock. I think the DSP applicator would probably be the most professional way to do it. <laughs> Regardless, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of a funny way to do it. Use an alcohol. Use, use alcohol. The only reason I don't really want to use, like, I wouldn't want to just spray alcohol is like, well, wiping my hands with alcohol. So if there's a different way to do it, just what, spray alcohol in the back window and then wipe the soap on it? <laughs> or in the end, just buy DSP, right? <laughs> Jeez, it's almost like DSP put some thought into all of that. But that was funny. I assumed that was going to go much easier than it actually did. Some people are like, I'm already over using a bar of soap. <laughs> Let's grab a different blade here real quick, and then, uh, and then we'll get to cutting. What are you guys saying? All right, now we got some chat feedback on this. I appreciate this. Um, I used to do it with just fabric, with a fabric, just wipe it and create static. No soap or dryer sheet. Interesting. So no soap at all. In the sock, spray alcohol. So putting a sock, a uh, soap bar in a sock. <laughs> what kind of sock? We using uh, we using Hanes socks. Is that what we're using, or are we using nicer ones? What was the bar of soap helping to accomplish? So there's a, uh, that's a good question. So there's a little bit, uh, dryer sheets aren't, aren't super healthy for you to use, but they're such a staple in the industry that we've just been using them forever. And because we've been using forever, we can't change. We're like, ah. No, we were looking into something else. So, something that's uh, not as harsh, I guess, as a dryer sheet. Some people use baby powder. True. I was never a baby powder fan. Changes the shrink up a little bit. Like, it's kind of, you either like it, I think, or you don't. Also, my hands feel very moisturized, though, from that, so that's nice. Thank you, Irish Springs. Cut the bar up, put it in a sock. Alcohol lets it dry fast. Gotcha. Okay. There's just something funny about using a sock. I mean, if it works, it works. Probably a black sock so it doesn't look so gross. Take a nice white sock and then use it a few times on stream. <laughs> B 
But one of the things I like about this too is that, well, like, do it, you never get so many helpful responses than when you go to do something and you do it incorrectly. So that is what we just did. We just, we just, this is what people tell me. Let's try it out and then we'll adjust for whatever the best way is. And then at the end of the day, maybe we'll figure out if it's any better or not. But yeah, if you go in a group and you go, how do I do this? You get a couple of responses. Sometimes in my group you get a lot of responses and I appreciate you guys for that. But when you, sh <laughs> when you like, hey, this is how I do it. Oh man, you get a lot more responses. You always get more help doing something wrong. Let's keep that in mind. My hands, they feel slippery. I can't even get this edge now. Everything's changed. They feel soapy, imagine that. <laughs> Waiting for those front quarters so you can give us some tips. The, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll help you as much as I can. Uh, the last set that I did went smooth. Um, the one before that, not quite as much. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about it when we get there. They're not that bad. It's just about sizing your pattern right. So we still might screw them up. They're real touchy. But if you get them just right, then they'll just sit in there with no problems. Yeah, they do have ceramic edges, and they have a hard plastic edge on one side, but it's offset on the inside a little bit. So if you size your pattern just right, everything looks clean. Why not use pre-cut tint? Why not hand cut and get more exact to the car? I mean, if you're just about fast turnover, then sure. We're about to precision. Very, very dark. Do you offer a warranty? Yeah, absolutely. I offer the same warranties that the film manufacturers do. That's kind of the whole, that's where the warranties really come from. So if something happens, <laughs> I mean, a window peels down the road, windows bubble, uh, those warranties are through the film manufacturer, so they're supposed to help you out with those. Just like if you buy a computer with a one-year warranty and then all of a sudden it doesn't start up anymore, well, they're supposed to do something about it. So the retailer doesn't do things out of pocket. They contact the manufacturer. There's always some out of pocket, but so it depends on your film, film manufacturer, what exactly they'll do. So you can check on all that beforehand. But yeah, here, color stable, lifetime warranty. If somebody's got a problem with the job, we take care of it. And then if I had a bunch of film bubble up, ooh, Geo would hear about it for sure. <laughs>
How do you not cut the paintwork or the window? Practice. You're picking specific areas to cut. So for the top edge, for example, we're just using that as a guide. Um, on the side windows, you're using these little gaps here and putting a little pressure and following that edge all the way down. So very similar to vinyl. Vinyl, they'll cut sometimes right on the vinyl and score it, or they'll cut in between areas window tints very similar like that. Sometimes you are cutting uh, right on the glass, but we either put something in between or we use 60 degree stainless steel blades and we cut very, very lightly as to not leave damage. When will glass aid be in stock? Uh, well, it should be getting processed today. So hopefully in like a week or so. But I'm, uh, I'm gonna hopefully, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not keeping my hopes too high up right now, but that is, it's soon, sooner than, than next year. <laughs> In the vinyl world, we use knifeless tape also. Yep, yep, knifeless tape is a great way uh, to do it. Fortunately, unfortunately, tint doesn't work that way. So we can't use knifeless tape here. Or we'd be, we'd be digging the heck out of it, I'm sure. How would you properly clean a window without access to a clay bar? They're pretty accessible everywhere. But yeah, I, so you don't have to clean a window with a clay bar. I've been tinting for a long time without. Clay bars are a relatively new thing. Um, they just are very impressive, especially on back windows. So you can use, um, like a one inch razor blade. You can use glass safe scrub pads. Um, you're either gonna want to like scrape the surface or scrub the surface. Um, but you know, I've even, you know, just taken a plastic tool like this and just lightly scraped over the window. And that can be enough in a lot of cases. So it depends on how much needs to be clean, but if you have just a generally clean window, there isn't a lot that you have to do, but all the little extra stuff is about that like 1%, just that much more. So all the prep, extra prep, taping, that type of stuff, that's just about keeping that extra little bit clean when we go to tint it. Also keeping these covered, you know, a lot of, a lot of shops, I've done it too, will leave water running down the door panels. You wipe it off, it's fine. But here, you know, we're streaming, so I don't really want to broadcast water running down people's door panels anymore. So we came up with a better solution. Have you ever gotten bored of your personal, personal vehicle film? Oh. Uh, yeah, so that's one reason we <laughs> make videos. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm not a huge car guy either. So the same shades to me kind of look good. And then I use it like I have other stuff going on. So I'll, like sell off of it too. So that's why like I kind of enjoy leaving it where it's at. But yeah, I like playing around with some other films too. I get bored with just dark films. It would be fun to do some other creative stuff. So that's where the chameleons, chameleon films and whatnot are, are pretty interesting to me. Toolbox. Is the carpet shield 24 or 36 inches wide? It is 24. I get the 24 by 200. 
How long would you recommend waiting to roll down windows after getting tint? Uh, just a couple days. GoPro. Just a couple days, uh, but leave it up to the shop that you got it at too. So with in the summertime, a couple days. Wintertime, longer than that. So right now I just tell people two to three days, but you know, tape the switches. If they accidentally roll them down, everything should be fine. Uh, and everything's covered under warranty too. So if they rolled it down early, uh, you know, I used to get real butt hurt at customers rolling down their, their windows early. And then it would be like, oh, they ruined my tent. Well, it's super easy to forget. You go through a drive-through or something and then you just roll down your window and then you're like instantly reminded. You're just like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, but now it's too late. So cleaning a window without a clay bar. This is a one inch razor blade. They're very popular. I really only use this when there's like uh, stickers and adhesives and stuff. I don't use it all the time, but we have a lot of stickers over there. Kia is pretty famous for stickers. So I got one here. We'll bring it around the car. This is the gator blade. This is a plastic scraper. This is really good with these side edges for like getting in these side seals, loosening up um, some of the dirt and stuff that might be clinging to the glass there, scraping it down. So then we roll the window down a little bit and I'll mainly use like a clay bar for the top edge, but just let's pretend I'm not doing this right now. Like I said, it's really for like the extra little 1% so let's pretend I didn't do that. I would then also take maybe a rag, wipe off the top edge because there can be a lot of dirt sitting up there. And I think my car is going to shut off on me. And then with the rest of it, take a razor blade or a scrub pad um, and just, you know, just go over the rest of it. And then you can finish it up with like the gator blade on the sides. Razor blades? Scratch? Would one inch razor blade scratch glass during cleaning? No! <laughs> no! If they did, I wouldn't use them because I'd be scratching the hell out of this window. We don't do anything to damage the car. If you Look up how to uh, do a chip repair on a windshield. They'll take a razor blade on the outside like this and they'll go. Razor blades are fine uh, to use on, on glass. Carbon razors, uh, the type of metal actually doesn't matter. Uh, it matters with, with cutting immediately on the glass but it doesn't matter when you're scraping. So if you're surface scraping, you can use any type of uh, any type of razor blade. You're totally fine. That's a good question. K5 door panel, tight, tighter. They're, I don't know, they're, they're definitely not the most fun, but I don't know. I haven't had a super difficult time tucking into the sides and stuff of these. They'll sometimes grab a little bit more because you gotta go a little far. So I wanna check how far did we go on this. Eh, we could go just a little bit farther. And then the bottom, uh, the bottom's got a tighter plastic panel, but it's not as bad as what I would say is on like the Jetta or some other ones. But I could see this is just, this is your next common vehicle that's gonna give some people some headaches, I think. Just a little bit. Let's get this real close. Nice. 
Back it down. Make sure, so this one, the rubber gasket, goes like this. So it's smart to like take a second and make sure you pressed all that air out because you could run that up a couple of times and then it, for whatever reason, like right here, will leave like a small air bubble just because of the way that it's pressing against the card. Just make sure that's as clean as you can. And then when you roll it up, you're not looking at it after the fact, trying to like press out an air bubble in the top corner. Especially on something like this. I've done it, I did it a couple times. That's why I bring it up. Beep, beep. Roll the window up. Let's see about tucking this in. Those have been hanging out there for a little while now. As for tucking, one corner in, just prop that seal back a little bit. We're not going super far down on this either. Whenever you have really tight seals and stuff, like this, I wouldn't say it's got really tight ones, but the paneling's a little close. I don't know, I've gone a little shy. This one I think it's, it's pretty normal for me, but sometimes you can go a little shy and like I just aim for being below that first seal and then you'll be okay. Yo dudes, real quick. Um, you guys let me shrink or tint this without shrinking the, the window. <laughs> See these little guys right here? We didn't shrink it. I totally, it just skipped my mind. So it doesn't look like we created any fingers though. That's about keeping everything even. So that's the kind of like, <laughs> yay. I didn't just screw myself, but you know, just because you didn't take off the seal doesn't mean you're completely screwed with fingers or whatever if you didn't shrink it. As long as you lay everything evenly and the glass isn't super curved, you can get away with not shrinking it. But I like to always shrink them, but in case we don't, look, we didn't bottom load it and we didn't have to shrink it. Oh my gosh. I asked you, but you didn't answer me. Oh, well, look at you. You caught it. I missed it. I was rambling, so. <laughs> We're going to shrink these other ones. But apparently, you don't have to shrink the K5 if you really don't want to. Just a little bit. I have a weird thing for bottom loaders. <laughs> Do you ever get annoyed from car dings? Uh, the real obnoxious ones, most of them you just kind of tune out. But there's some. I think Ford are pretty uh, still, still kind of annoying for what they are. Bottom loaders have a weird thing with Matt. Yeah, they don't like me. They're like, ah, he should have taken that whole thing apart. And then. Yeah, I had an Explorer, same thing. 
really, really, booty doo, booty doo, and they just, they don't shut up. I don't know who approved that, and I don't know why they let it go on for so long. So, now we can put that heat gun over there. But yeah, we got away with not shrinking this door, which is cool. I wouldn't pat myself on the back for that one. I'm just glad that I don't have to redo this door. Everything's fine on it. <laughs> I was going to tell Matt how easy it was to take the seals out. Yeah, uh, the first K5 that I did, I removed the front seals because there were, like, it was the first one I had. There was a lot of people talking about problems tinting them and that they would suggest removing the seals and other things. And I've done a good number of them now and I haven't had those same issues. Let me... Huh. Should we do? Pressing these little little things down. I don't know. Okay. Let's do these finish doing that quarter window there because it's all taped up ready to go. I would usually get my film from that back window, but I wanna just put the film on right before I go to make the video, so We'll save it. How dare they tint differently than me. <laughs> I know, right? How dare they have a different business and do things differently than me and charge different pricing. I'm the best. That's business, yo. Okay. So for these front quarters, if you have a good plotter software, that cuts these out pretty spot on, then you are sitting pretty on those ones. You have an advantage over what I have to do right now. <laughs> I, I don't like cutting these out a whole ton, kind of like the fusions and stuff, but they're a little bit more finicky than the fusions. So, uh, I think the easiest way that I got these to lay in there last time was I'll take the flat edge of the film and I'll line it up on the bottom just a little bit underneath. So let me get my sprayer here too. So let's turn this guy on. So it's a little hard to see, but I'll go a little bit below the bottom, but the bottom is at an angle. So it's not this flat rubber edge here, it's just, that ceramic border is what you're trying to go past. If I look on the inside, I got a lot of room to work with down here. Like, it's just, you got miles of space at the very bottom. I don't know why they made it that way, but they did, because it's Kia. They finally took my suggestion and updated their, uh, their logo for the new ones, so that's kind of cool. They definitely took my suggestion. They saw my stream and they're like, you know what, he's right. So we're gonna tack this down. Um, from here, it's just getting really, really precise cuts. So I'll cut this back edge, just put a little bit of blade out, go straight up. And then you wanna do a, turn on a light, do a real small, gap on these ones. So you're going to overlap it by like a sixteenth. And as long as you keep it pretty even, it lays in there really well. Uh oh. It's falling down. But that should be good. All over around this top corner too, because on the inside of here, the plastic starts to round just a little bit. So I'll sometimes over round them and they'll lay in there a little bit better without seeing a gap, which is, I don't know. I wanted to leave it straight. 
but it seems like when you create some sort of funky over round up at the top, it's just the right amount of curve to like set in there. Straighten out any wonky edges. You can round this front off just a little bit. And then hopefully if we, if we guessed right, this should be the pattern that fits in there. And as for cleaning it, well, you just soak it down. <laughs> so, you because you can't get a squeegee up here. That's the unfortunate bit. Not not really. Like you can kind of get a squeegee up there, but there's so much like it's all pinched and trapped up there. Luckily, these are all new. Imagine when they're going to be like a couple years old. So I'll run something like a tri edge or anything in there. Just try and clean it out as much as I can. And then along that side paneling too. And then we're just gonna taco this, taco this in there a little bit. Start with that leading edge, move it straight in. And then, like I said, if your cut lined up right, put your head here, because this is how somebody's gonna sit in the car and kind of like look through, so they'll be able to see a gap. Um, and then, because you got so much room on the bottom and you overlap it just a little bit, if you have room to shift it up and down just to cover everything up pretty nicely. And there's like this little indent in this plastic that just the tint slides in there if you keep a nice straight edge. And then the last thing is to look up here. Um, see, we rounded that corner and it looks perfectly black. So looks like that quarter window actually went amazing. That's awesome, yay. <laughs> Because there's been a, there was a couple times that I tried doing these and it just didn't go quite that easy. And then this last K5 that I did uh, sometime last week, um, keeping that flat edge at the bottom and just being pretty exact about your cut all the way around, making sure your film is not going to slide around, that all helped. So. You could leave these sitting for a little bit, take a heat gun, tack them up, and then come back to them. I just want to get them squeegeed out, and then I will peel the plastic off the door, and then I can forget about this window entirely. So as for all these other little bubbles, using um, one of these little turbos, that's pretty handy. That gets, some of them knocks them down. A triage is pretty good to get in there. And then also like an easy reach has been pretty good too. But for annoying quarter windows, they're not as annoying as the gasket style ones. These all, they have still have a rubber border or uh, a ceramic border, so. If you take your time, make sure your cuts are right, or you know, plot them out with a good software. These things, not, not so bad. See, and look, my door panel, it looks all nice and pretty too. How about that? Unfortunately, we have to do that twice. Yay! Nice, clean window and quarter window. Moving on. Do you scrub the small corner windows? I didn't. Um, this one is really really clean so I haven't had to like scrub them or anything yet 
So I'll just kind of take a tool and work any dirt out that's in the corners and stuff. Yikes. I think we're still okay though. Oh, look at that. It now curves with the rest of the door. <laughs> wow, that looks so clean. Ah, it'll do the job. When carpet shield sticks the carpet shield, it does not let go. Ah, oh well. Um, how does the tint stick to the glass? What are you spraying? Oh, phew. So we're spraying a soapy water solution and window tint is like, like a sticker. So there's a, you peel it and then you stick it to the glass and then there's adhesive there that sticks. So once it really dries out, it's pretty much fused to the window. How long does tinting all the windows usually take? Um, on a car like this, off stream, um, last one I did was a couple of hours, um, but inside uh, two hours is usually what I aim for without a windshield. So we used a, just the scrub, or what was it? The gator blade there. We can use the scrub pad. And all this. And then clay bar at the top. Nope, not today. Have you ever had a pattern just go rogue on you and fall on the floor? That's not fun when you have concrete floors either. <laughs> put, put film on the glass, shrink it, go to the other side, and then a pattern goes rogue on you and just like falls on the floor. Ugh, sucks. There's always a crease in it. Is that a normal clay bar? Uh, it's a synthetic clay bar. This is my business, Detroit Tint Studio. This is an actual client's vehicle that we're doing. He dropped this off till he gets out of work and we will have it all tinted for him by that time. Do you tape all the windows now? I do. We use, we use a lot more tape. <laughs> but the difference is just a little bit more security when you're installing. Uh, it does make a little difference, even for somebody that's been installing for a while. So if you ever got miscellaneous little specks of dirt, on the sides, uh, especially when you're kind of fighting with a pattern trying to tuck it in or something, that's really what it's for. So even on something like this, if I gotta wiggle the tint a little bit to get it tucked in the seals or anything like that, um, there's always the potential to have dirt feed back in. So what this does is it just gives you a nice clean seal. There's always that potential something can still feed back but you just essentially put a brand new seal on the sides and trapped all that, that crap in there. So it's, uh, it's locked in there until you take the tape off. You can also roll down the windows and thoroughly scrub and clean all the seals, but they're still kind of rubbery. And like, you're not doing that with the felt ones. And especially when you have an older vehicle that's kind of like 
falling apart or you have like a work truck or somebody that's been on a dirty road um that's where it's been like super helpful so i did a semi truck the other day and he came in for ceramic on the front two windows and it's just man that thing has hardly been cleaned at all the glass i'm just scrubbing the crap out of it there's all types of shit falling out of the seals. Every time you wipe a towel along the side rubbers, it's just leaving all this black on the towels and stuff. It's just gross. So I taped all the side seals and man, it's like tinning one of those sprinter vans. Turned out way, way nicer. So, and then I realized how helpful it was for people that are just starting out too, because I say, I always say you don't have to tape seals. Because you don't, you don't have to tape them. But when you fight with the tint, then you wish that you did. <laughs> Does pulling the tape rip the tint out? No, no, this is actually like, what's super cool about it too, is if you use a thin uh, sheathing tape, it does really well with sticking to pretty much any panel without having to wipe it beforehand. And then what I've noticed is watch, we're done this window, peel the corner, and then it pulls right out of the seal. Doesn't pull the seal out, and look, it's like bone dry right there. And then we use the same tape here. So we have like small water line at the very top and then very, very minimal water for as much as we played around with that, that seeped down the whole panel and stuff. You can create a really watertight seal. So I did this Mitsubishi, ah, I forgot what it was. It was a brand new Mitsubishi, which I didn't even, I haven't seen a Mitsubishi that I, that I can even think of in recent years. I haven't tinted one in quite a while, uh, but it was an SUV. Um, and then I had like an Alpha. Um, they had, you know, all this stitching and stuff on the sides. And whenever you get into soft panels with stitching, you wanna be extra careful because when water seeps into that stitching, uh, it can swell the panel. So use it to create like watertight barriers on stuff like that so everything's extra safe. The Dodge Rams, even those things are really bad offenders of that. And the stitching is like right up top. So somebody that gets like one of the limiteds or something like that, you don't wanna pay to have to redo one of those or replace one of those, that would suck. It's only a matter of time before somebody sees that. Oh, I gotta do another one of those. <laughs> I don't wanna do another one of those. Is limo darker than 5%? Uh, limo is, is kind of, that's just slang for 5% really. I don't know when it started, but it was before I even got into tinning. Everybody calls 5% limo, but you could have like a 2% limo if you want, if it's available. Is this the Helios? No, no, this is GeoShield Pro Classic. Although, I have nothing but good things to say about that ceramic that I used. I just haven't tested it long term or anything or put it on my own. They helped me out of a spot. <laughs> it was like, it was amazing timing. Like, oh shit, I just ran out. Of course I did, right? I always make sure I'm stocked up, but I just didn't order extra five because I had a fair amount when I ordered ceramic. And like nobody was getting 5% ceramic and then everybody was getting 5% ceramic. How's the color shift? 
Uh, it's pretty offensive. <laughs> On cloudy days, it's, it's cool. Um, hey! <laughs> Thank you. Um, it was pretty offensive, though. There it is. Jorge Sandoval super chatted five dollars. Testing, testing, testing. Jorge with the five. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. One second, guys. Hello, Tint Studio. How can I help you? Hi, how can I help you? Uh, no, not yet. So it takes up to about three hours. Okay, yeah, that'll actually work out great. I'm, uh, I've got one side done. We're working on the other side right now. We still got the back window to do, though, too. All right, no problem. See you then. Yep, not done yet. <laughs> it's funny, because all he said was uh, that he was going to pick it up after work, but he did have a little bit of time to pick it up now if it was ready. But, you know, that happens. If we hurried, we would have been done. But we don't hurry. But yeah, Jorge, thank you for the five. Tell him to tune into the stream. Oh, I should have. Why don't you tape the top? Um, we're not touching it. So there's not really anything, any problems that I'm going to get from the top other than like the potential for water to drip there. So all this, if you're scraping against that, then you're just creating other problems for yourself. But you, so you just want to really tape the areas that you're like, so up here a little bit, but anything above that, you don't need to. But if you want to, that's fine. Is that a Honda Civic backlash hanging on the wall? It is. That used to be my tint shade demo out of my garage too. Everybody had flat windows, and then the Type R uh, was, was one of those really unique windows that I thought was going to be a lot more popular than it is. I haven't got a, many of them, but for the ones that I've had, that comes in super handy. I'm gonna retint my windshield with Pro Nano. Nice. Hope you like it. VW Atlas. Uh, just the front doors. I did one of them. They're pretty typical VWs, though. It wasn't bad. Just a little tighter. But it was just front windows on the one that I did. When I tinted my windshield, I had a gray border. Yeah, so you're gonna have that with most windshields. Um, what that is, is the dot matrix letting air uh, in between the film and the glass. So like on this one, um, probably on the quarters too, if I had to guess, you have this little raised dot matrix border around the whole thing. Um, tint doesn't really do a good job of sticking and filling in all that space so it looks like a gray silverish border all the way around. It's really, really common. Every car that gets tinted uh, without the glass, uh, or without the dots kind of embedded in the glass, uh, will do that. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, this drop down. Come on, just go up a little bit. Up a little bit, thank you. Car sound or window tint? Uh, there's, it's definitely, I would say, 
easier to do car audio, but car audio has got its own like unique challenges to it. But what's, what's nice about car electronics is that it's very, like there's steps and you can make mistakes and you can go back and you can fix them without having to throw away material. Window tent is kind of this, this one shot go where if this pattern doesn't turn out clean the first time, I have to recut it and start over. But uh, car audio has fallen off a lot. So if I were to pick one uh, for long term, uh, that would be window tinting well over anything 12 volt uh, car accessories, radios, alarms. I've watched that whole business die, die off quite a lot. My, uh, my dad, uh, he owned a uh, auto accessories company, he had about 11 stores I think at one point, maybe a couple more than that. And then more competition with <laughs> internet and uh, more being offered from uh, the factory. You know, they're just trying to offer as much as they can out of the factory, so it's not really a smart thing to get into. Everybody used to get those radios. Flip outs, the double din radios. Um, there's still a little market for it, but it's just tough. What was it? The ones with the face plates that you could take off because people would steal them. <laughs> All that stuff. But now I can buy a car and it usually comes standard with an alarm and a remote starter, halfway decent radio, and if I want to put something else in it, eh, it's just not worth the money. I'll get a new car in three years. Yeah, exactly that too. They're just doing iPads. Yeah, it's way better, honestly. So there's sometimes just iPad kits and then they just go in there so you need like a little wiring harness and stuff. Uh, you can definitely have really complicated setups, but yeah, it uh, depends on what you got. That market, that market's way different now. <laughs> Sell the Civic already. I gotta take it to get the quarter window replaced, <laughs> and then I'll try and sell it. Selling it just yuck. I hate. Ugh. Not fun. Most stock radios have USB and Bluetooth. Yep. So then you just get a phone mount. Use your phone most of the time. My Focus requires like a $500 adapter to fit a standard radio. Yeah, so it's not even worth it to do on a Focus. Um, how much do you tint past the dot matrix? Uh, so this is a quarter inch wide. I only go like an eighth of an inch. Um, you don't, you just want to get over a little bit. So I give myself about an eighth of an inch border. Um, an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch border around the whole thing. You have like a little bit of wiggle room, but it doesn't have to be very much. Remember our CD players? <laughs> yeah, I was really happy when I got my mini disc player, and then those things were short lived. And then like holding over what, like 13 songs on a CD? Like when I heard of MP3 CDs, I was like, no way. How are you, you're in like, you're on like track 50. How'd you do that? It's an MP3 CD player. What? That's crazy.
Is 50% best for a windshield? That's up to you. 50% uh, is a nice light shade. You can still tell it's tinted, but it's not gonna, not, doesn't do a ton for glare reduction. It's, I think it's more for aesthetics. 35 will give you good glare reduction, but it's uh, much darker and stands out quite a bit. So I like 50 on my windshield, but also it's ceramic too. So that's another big thing. If you want like, if you're looking for heat rejection, uh, any ceramic film is a good way to go for heat rejection. Any, you can do it in any shade. <laughs> My, uh, I had a Walkman CD player and then I had a Walkman mini disc player. Um, the sad thing about my mini disc player was it was like the, it was the sport version. It was, it was nice. And then it developed a problem where, <laughs> where it decided to, when you go to write a new song to it, it would erase the whole disc. And then you'd lose all your music. No fun. You know what still was crazy though? Was the tape, uh, somebody said they had a tape player. What's still kind of like is shocking to me is the tape players, like the cassettes that have the uh, 3.5 mil jacks on them. Like that to me is amazing that that works, but it does. Use your MP3 player with your cassette player. It's like, whoa, they were cheap too. Okay, so hopefully this one's gonna line up. Again, same type of situation here. Cut that tint a little bit over the edge. You got way more room on the bottom, so you can slide it down a little bit farther down. It's just about guessing this top edge. And then you just slide it up a little bit and cover all your gaps. Corner is the only thing that sometimes really gives me a big trouble. Take something, clean it out. Have a bunch of 80s and 90s kids. <laughs> Anti skip CD players, yeah. All right, let's slide this guy in here. Put some tape over a cassette tape and you can record it of it. Whoa, that sounds crazy. Yeah, this guy right here. So this top corner, that's why I over round it. Now it's looking a little bit better. When you have a little top corner on a quarter window and it presses up against whatever is up there, man, trying to get that sucker to lay smooth, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's a big pain. Especially on gasket style ones. I won the best gift ever. Every vehicle that I have will get a free tint job. Whoa! That's interesting. Who was doing that? Free tint for life. That's like almost as good as free pizza. OK, 
Okay, I think we're doing pretty good here. Just tack it softly or leave it or use a heat gun, any of those things until it hopefully locks up into place and then you can press much harder on it. Until then, it just slides all over the place. Did you even shrink the windows? Uh, on one of, <laughs> funny you say that. On that window, we forgot to shrink, uh, but on all the other ones, we remembered right after we did that window, but it still turned out good. So we didn't shrink these quarters though. I like to shrink everything pretty much a little bit, but you know, when it gets this small, there's just not a, not a point for this one. But if you did it, just a little bit, it wouldn't hurt. Cool, that should be good. We'll come back to it, make sure everything's really, really pressed out. Let it sit for a second. Looks like everything's good though. You know, people were telling me when they were tinting these that there's like a module that was getting wet or something. I don't know. I still haven't had that become an issue yet. On the Durangos I did. On this one, I don't know. I've done quite a few so far and I haven't seen any issues. So, Be optimistically cautious, I guess. There is a module in the door. How are people ruining it? But no problem, okay. I would love to see videos from people that mess them up just so I could know like, oh, that's what they did. Because whenever a new car comes out, especially when it's a popular car, like the Ram windshields, that freaks so many people out. And then like I messed one of them up at another shop. It was just like I hadn't had an issue and then we figured out what the problem was and we adjusted for it and I haven't had a problem with them since. So, just like with these, I haven't had a problem with them. I don't know. I always keep my eye out for something, though. I hope the dude doesn't get his car tomorrow to see his passenger window giving him the finger. <laughs> now it'll be fine. Uh, if it leaves and it's all locked down, it's not going to pop up after that. If it leaves this shop, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Scrub pad, good boy. Razor blade. Yeah, we'll be all good with this one. I believe there's an amp in the truck that's not supposed to get wet. I heard that too. So we threw a bunch of towels back there on the first couple that we did and then I've tinted a few cents and again, I haven't had any issues with them. So, hmm. What do you do if you get something wet you're not supposed to? Oh, we gotta press it one more time. Oh, you panic. At that point, you just go, ah, crap. You had a bad day. Um, you have to try and get it fixed. So take it apart, dry it out, put it back in, see if it works, unplug the battery, some stuff like that. Like. Hope it, hope it dries and pray. That's another one. Um, take it to 
or have somebody come and fix it, like take it to the dealer, get it fixed. Like, yeah, it's you're kind of boned on, on the whole job at that point. But that is why we have a really good Facebook group. So if you have questions on a car um, or keep an eye out for people posting about problems, because whenever, like that's, that's where I caught wind of this was, uh, there were people, there were a handful of people saying they had some issues with K5s when they first started sending them. So I went extra cautious and just kind of worked into what I normally do and we've been good. <laughs> Put it in rice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just have a full bay full of rice that we park the car in. We just bags of rice. There you go. There's a fair amount of times where something can dry out and then it'll it'll be totally fine. But it, it's you know, if water is kind of like inside of a module or a plug. That takes time for it to dry, so park it outside. Get some heat, get some airflow there. I mean, and then so, like somebody will take the car and <laughs> hey, should be fine. Let me know. But yeah, I, I don't, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't like that. Wouldn't like to say that. Seventeen Accord. I've heard of those. Something on the windshield. See, the thing with the Rams was like people were like, I, "I'm using like a soak rope and uh, like I, I toweled it off. I did everything, and it still like went on me." Well, I mean, I saw speaker grills and stuff that were still exposed and it looked like water was running in between the holes on the speaker grills or the edges and stuff like that so on that one we had to uh i'll, I'll go all the way to the bcm and throw rags over all the wiring and stuff for that and then still cover everything up at the dash so spank the window We spank the window. <laughs> Film will freeze up on you, and then like sometimes you gotta like just just judder it over. Even when you're tucking your film into the sides, uh, sometimes you just wiggle it a little bit, and that'll kind of keep it loose on the glass and sliding over. So something like this, I want to be a little careful of. Um, it doesn't look like the film slid all the way. So I want to just try and free up that space and, and kind of roll it all down. There'll be certain times that the film can pinch up as you're doing that. If you just go straight down and then you'll just like crease it. It'll just lock up in one teeny little spot and then you'll crease it and it'll be not fun. Last little pass, neat. There's like a little finger popping up there. So I guess we didn't quite snap it as perfectly as what I would have hoped. So that's an easy fix. Take everything out in the meantime. Oh, my tape tore. There we go.
Sweet. Yeah, so we got a little finger right there. My worst fear is to mess somebody's rye up. Yeah, it's not fun. Trust me, I've been there. Luckily, I mean, for me, I, I had it a little bit easier uh, with messing stuff up because when you're at a shop and you aren't the one that is talking to the customers <laughs> all the time, um, then they'll handle the customer and, you know, you still will have to, like, you know, if you cause damage to it, then it's, you know, if you're working for a shop, <laughs> that, that'll be up to you and them. But, I don't know. It depends on the shop. Like, if I was contracting for, for someone that would come out of my pocket, if I was paid by the hour, um, they'll try and pin it on you. But if you're at a good shop, they'll, they'll foot the bill. And just, like, that's just part of, part of business. Hopefully they're understanding. How are you reading these comments? Uh, everything is sent to my headset on text-to-speech. So I hear everything that you guys say. Everything. Not everything. Most things. So that way I can keep on working. When you do it for a year straight, it becomes pretty normal. In the very beginning, it's kind of a lot. And that goes for emojis, too. <laughs> Did the glass shop get a replacement tinter yet? No. So if there's somebody that wants to go work at Symbol Auto Glass in Shelby, I mean, as far as I know, they're still looking for somebody. Unless they're just so busy that they don't want to do tint anymore, which I doubt that's the case. I mean, they are, they're, they're busier than ever, but... They always seem to like keeping their tinting program going, so if it made sense for them, they'll do it. Do you recommend getting insurance if you're by yourself? Uh, if you're gonna use it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The insurance is a weird is a weird thing for me. I mean, yeah, I think everybody should get it because if you really need it, then you really need it. The one thing that I'll say, though, is like there's been a lot of shops that I've tinted for that have insurance, but whenever there is a problem with a car, they always pay out of pocket because that's, uh, that's not going to change their insurance rates. So while they all have it, none of them have ever used it in any type of a damage situation. But when you need it, when you really need it, that's what it's there for. Plus, I think you can get relatively cheap uh, shop insurance, too. So, I don't know. Probably spend more on internet than, than shop liability insurance or something. Okay. So, let's, uh, let's continue what we were doing. Uh, previously, and let me grab both. <laughs> we had a guy back a boat right into the back, into the side of the car. Dang, that's uh, that's rough. All right, we're gonna finish up this video here. So I have Irish Spring soap. We are following up with uh, where we're at. Wow, that was terrible. Let me redo that. All right, so everything is dry on this back window. We have all the sides tinted on the car. Now it's time to do this back window. We're gonna be doing our shrink comparison. So we had a little bit of a rough going applying the soap on this side, but it is, I think, smoothed out enough. Uh, we have a generous layer of Irish Spring soap on this side, 
and then we have our snuggles dryer sheet on the other side. So we're going to be putting the 5%. Uh, this is a color stable dyed film. Um, so this stuff shrinks pretty well. One of the best shrinking films that I've used. So we're going to do a little comparison here and see. Does a soap bar work? Which, spoiler, it should. People use them. And two, how does it compare to what I've been doing? I haven't ever used a soap bar, ever. We, uh, we got some tips on applications. Some people say cut it up, um, throw it in a sock, which I think sounds a little funny, but hey, whatever type of way to applicate it that you want. Um, also, uh, what is it? Yeah, like chopping it up into pieces, putting it in a rag, or sudsing it up, putting it on your hand. But I guess smearing it on the, on the back window just like you would a dryer sheet isn't quite exactly the same. So we're gonna section them off. We're going to just do a raw comparison here. This isn't really about speed. I don't expect one side to be faster. What I'm going to be looking for is more, is one side going to be sticky? Is it going to be floaty? Is it going to be smooth? Are they both going to work? Let's find out. Definitely working fine. Where can I get that card right now? Felt card. Uh, it's a, this, this is actually what a new one looks like. Mine usually looks pretty gross. Um, that's what I shrink all back windows with for shrinking. We've done plenty of videos on, um, but I always smooth it out with a hard cart. Heat gun does all the work. Yeah, it's been going fine. Um, seems like it sticks. I would want to do this on a handful more windows. There isn't like a ton to shrink on this back window, but I think it's enough to give you a general comparison. It really is just kind of like locking down fine into place. If you need it to float, probably wouldn't use this. Are your felt cards stiffer than MacTac cards? Uh, I don't think they're any stiffer. They're maybe like a little thicker, a little bit blockier. I think the MacTacs are a little bit thinner. Uh, their MacTac cards are really, really nice. So I'm noticing like it's... <laughs> there's a lot of residue there. Um, there's this interesting like... It is really locked down there. So, so far... The way that we applied it is uh, it was a decent layer and it, it's locked that down pretty tight to the glass. So yeah, I mean that works. If you need it to float a little bit more, you're going to have some problems. So now we're going to go over to the dryer sheet. You should invest in a 3M printer to cut your tint. I'm not a huge fan of pre-cut, but that's me. Why would you want the film to stick versus float? So, it's when you start working yourself into weird situations. When you have more material to shrink, it's a great question. Um, there's kind of just different preferences, but like when you have more film, see all this, this all needs to be shrunk. And when you're shrinking, you want the film to grab enough, but you don't want it to, you usually don't want it to lock down so much that if you need to kind of like shift things around, it's then fused to the glass. So, Dryer sheets have always kind of been this happy in-between where it'll let a little bit float, but it'll mostly lock down.
I'll need to try this on some more windows and some more films. There's not enough here to really tell me one way or another. The soap bar is definitely really sticky. This isn't quite as sticky, but works really well. So I don't think one or the other is any smoother. There's just different options. So if you wanna argue about them in the comments, please feel free to go ahead. But I mean, to me, they're both okay. Um, there's just sometimes with like my carbon film um, that it's like having an extra sticky material there will sometimes make it bunch up a little bit more or it can just be harder to smooth out where I've always uh, been pretty consistent with like a dryer sheet. I've always liked the feel of it and everything like that. So um, on a window like this though, there isn't enough one way or another. That's just kind of a rough comparison. So hey, we'll keep playing around with it I think and then if we have some different thoughts, uh, we'll definitely have a follow up here. But in the meantime, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Yeah, that should be good. That should be good. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I don't think there's enough, enough here yet. I have to play around with them more. But they both definitely work. Have you ever snap shrunk a uh, brow? Yes, yes I have actually. Yeah, if you're doing like an oversized windshield strip, um, especially on that, yeah, I'll definitely snap shrink them just a little bit. I try and push everything out evenly and then I'll have, like on the bigger ones, I'll have little fingers pop up. So it is definitely a good idea to shrink those. I'd love to hear about mobile tinter setup and precautions. How mobile? Like running around to people's houses or going from shop to shop? My mobile setup is still all on, on camera. The film, the car, and then that tool cart over there was all I ever brought for mobile and my, my spray tank. That's it, that's all, I that's all I ever brought with me. Now I've got so much more, <laughs> so much more space. This light, I need to change the triple haze, which means I wanna just throw it in the garbage. Craftsman. Craftsman stick light. What a waste. Get the get the Harbor Freight one. What's easier windshields? Or back windows? Back windows. Back windows are much easier than windshields. Windshields, somebody is staring at it all the time. Oh, why did I do that? I just threw away quarter window material. Oh, no. Now I gotta cut more. That's a shame. Wow, this is, uh, this is stuck. For real. That's nice to know. Some windows, it doesn't always do it quite that hard. Harbor Freight Light is amazing. It is. Somebody told me about another light that I forgot about. I want to look into another one. But that, yeah, it's like 30 bucks, rechargeable, really bright. Uh, 
Um, DIY carport tinner, wondering how to deal with shrinking outside, light breeze. Uh, that's tough. You're not giving yourself uh, a whole lot, <laughs> a whole lot to work with on that because you can't do anything about the side breeze. Um, it's really, you just gotta wait for it to die down. Um, I've never really tinted outside much at all. Um, I always treated it like something that needs to be done indoors. So if I was uh, tinting for another company or other people, I would tint in a garage or I wouldn't be tinting their vehicle really. So it's just, when you're fighting against all the elements, there's, there's just a lot working against you. So with shrinking, shrinking's gonna be the same, but yeah, anytime you get a light breeze whipping by that car, it's gonna turn your film into a kite and it's gonna tear it off the glass. Not fun. I would approach mobile a little bit different. I'd, I'd take on people where you can only tin in a garage. Um, even then, <laughs> it's a little it's a little tricky um, because unfortunately you have to turn people away if they don't have a space for you to tin in. Or I would try and partner up with some local shops. Uh, they don't have to be tint shops. They can be any number of different types of auto related businesses. They just have room for you to pull cars in and then do that. Look at, oh my God. <laughs> I gotta give an update on this towel here soon enough. Look at, I know we got limo back here so it's gonna be a little darker. Look at this tearing the fuck up. E, man, I wanted to like this thing. Looks like it's not gonna have that long of a lifespan. Sad. I've used this on probably 10 cars. I don't know, maybe more, but only a couple more. Da, 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 da. My side swipes, I, so I hung a couple of my side swipes. I have a stroke doctor, I haven't used this one yet. I like these, I used these for a while before I used side swipes, but I like side swipes better. Okay, so here's another side swipe, so we're gonna use that. It's limo tint though, so I don't know if I can quite, I don't know, we'll just use it, that's fine. I was thinking, I was like, God, comparison, so many, so many things, so many things to play around with and try and explain the differences. So I guess for this one, we can talk about the stroke doctor versus the side swipe. And then I'm gonna grab a bulldozer here too, for good measure, because bulldozers are great when you need to clean behind something like this brake light up here. So we're gonna just put these down. We're gonna clean this, and then we're gonna do it. So we spray a little up here, spray a little there. Um, we're gonna go over the whole thing with the bar, the clay bar. Did you try the belt sander? I did. I have to change the belt on it, but it's amazing. Spoiler alert, it's it's so good. It works so well. But I tried it on top of a VW CC. And it trimmed that stuff off so clean. And uh, it was still wet, too. I would recommend drying it out, but I did it while it was still wet, and it worked. You got a show us soon? Yeah. Yeah, we definitely got to do something on it. I was just, like, so annoyed because I swear I bought a little Allen key set up, and I thought it was somewhere around here, and I haven't been able to find it. And I'm like, I've looked, like, three times. So now I feel like I have to go get another Allen key set up just so I can change the belt. And I'm like, <sighs> I know as soon as I buy it, I'll find another one. Or I'll find the other one. 
<laughs> All right, so stroke doctor versus side swipe. Um, I like the side swipe better now. Um, I didn't give it the time of day. I went right to the stroke doctor because it looked like it was the, the better choice because it's got like a handle and stuff on it. And it works really well. See that? I just cleaned the whole bottom edge and it's got this nice handle. This doesn't have as much of a handle. Looks a little cheesy. This one's kind of old and beat up too, but it's still running great. We put the fusion blade in there. Um, so we're playing around with that. I don't really have any comments on it yet. But, so what I like to do is we clean all this out. Oh. Oh, I'll call him back in a little bit. I know who that is. That's Symbol Auto Glass, actually. I'll call him back in a little bit. Okay, so on the bottom, uh, Stroke Doctor works really well for most of them. When the glass gets a little bit more curved, that's when it's not quite as great. Uh, I, that's why I like the way that the blades on the side swipe kind of curve to the glass. So you kind of have to like get your hand in here a little bit more, put a little bit of odd pressure, but it, it does really, really well for like getting that bottom edge, I think a little bit better. So really there's two times I'll use it. First to clean the bottom And second, uh, when we go to swipe out all the air bubbles, we definitely use that. A bulldozer is another good tool to use, but when the bottom of the back window is really easy to get to, it's kind of it's easier to use a side swipe than a bulldozer. Interesting smell from the soap. So used to everything else. So we still have a lot of soap residue on this right side of the film. And then I'm assuming there's lots of dryer sheet residue on the other side. I can't see, oh wait, there it is. So we get this mostly tucked down. I can't see, I can't see. There's that edge. And then, there's a couple ways to do this. You do this like the way I do on the Impalas and just create that little air tunnel in between. And then it's almost like you're reverse installing here. You lay it against the glass and then you kind of wiggle it up. It'll start to grab the glass though a little bit when you do it this way but it's a pretty straightforward way I didn't even have to tug on the brake light this way the other way is like you can pull down on this brake light a little bit and then kind of shift it underneath but that seemed to go pretty well so let's get this all this air pressed out Make sure it lays even. Let's check it out. Sprayer. Squeegee. Everything's covered. Why didn't I roll it? Like reverse roll it? Yeah. 
Look at that. We're already switching back to the side swipe. <laughs> the stroke doctor, you can still clean the bottom well with it, and it'll, with enough pressure and stuff, it'll still push the water out. In most cases. But as soon as I picked up that side swipe, I was just able to kind of squeegee that bottom a little bit easier with something like this. So I will still go back to the side swipe. Press a little bit more water out that way. Make it look nice and even. about the Walmart tent. Yeah, we gotta make a video. I don't know what the tent with it though. Ah. Let's see. We're gonna clean it off, but does it at least look clean so far? The answer is yes. Scrub. We need a scrub scrub and a squeegee. Why didn't you cover the shelf? So we kind of did. We could do a better job of it. We'll wipe it all off. Um, it's kind of hard to shove a towel tightly in the bottom like you can on a windshield. So there isn't a great solution other than just kind of generally throwing a towel over it and then cleaning it off afterwards. Like, so you can cover the speaker grills and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't had any issues from just never even covering it, but, so I'll try and toss something over there, but with all the tight space and the squeegeeing and stuff, it's really hard to kind of do a nice clean job and protect it uh, in a way that's not gonna ruin your tent job. So like we did yesterday, we had a windshield on a Mustang and then I put this, that same dash towel cover all in there. Uh, but it was too tight on the bottom and it ended up ruining, ruining the tent job so we had to do it again. So I try to balance keeping things protected with also functionality. <laughs> so if I just shove a towel in there, bunch it all up, even try and smooth it out, it starts bunching up and it just, it, it can be a nightmare real quick. So that's why it's not quite as covered up as what I'd like, but things are generally perfectly fine. If I felt like it was gonna mess up, I would have done something different. How much for this? Looks awesome. Actually, not very expensive. Uh, this one was the Pro Classic, uh, this one, 240 for all the sides, sides in the back. No carbon, no ceramic, but still a quality film and still one hell of a job, right? That's what we aim for. It's fun to like even get that. And then sometimes people's reaction to it is like, oh, he didn't go for carbon. Because it started to become such a norm. We've done a few more color stable jobs lately, but we're still doing plenty of like carbon and ceramic. So it's really, really nice to see uh, for, for my business, for sure. Like it come from 
<laughs> sitting at a lot of places that didn't sell carbon and ceramic. They just, they sold tint jobs. I don't try and just sell a tint job. So, but if you want a good quality one across the board, we got that, we got that here. Can you double cut quarter windows too? Yeah, yeah, you can. It's a little bit tricky on limo. Uh, when you double it up, you're trying to see that line. It just can be a little bit tricky to see. But, so that's sometimes why we place them individually and cut them individually. But you can absolutely, like you could cut one, put it on the glass board and then cut out your other template that way. There's a number of ways that you could do it. You don't, this is, this is just cause I've just done it this way for a lot. So falling into just regular habits here. Unless it's on a Suburban or a Tahoe. Those quarter windows are different sizes. <laughs> Would you learn how to wrap cars? Um, eventually, I'd mess around with it some, but it's never gonna be me doing full wraps here on stream. I will have somebody that knows how to do it, do it if there was enough of a demand for it. It's a really good skill, solid business. Um, but me jumping to that instead of tinting, it like it doesn't make much sense. It would be purely for, I think, entertainment. <laughs> What's the hardest vehicle you've ever had to tint? Um probably a Beretta. That wasn't super fun. Um, old vehicles, uh, those aren't super fun. I mean like classic old vehicles. Those, dip, but it depended on what it was. Nothing really comes to mind as like a standout. There's just stuff that I didn't like to do. And at the end of some of those, you're not, you're not super happy with the results either. At least not all, always. So sometimes it's just like, you know, you do the best you can, but if it doesn't turn out how you want, then you gotta maybe be okay with that. Didn't you two piece the Beretta? I did actually. It didn't make any sense. So it was when I've been tinning for like a couple of years at that point. Uh, they brought it in on a Saturday like any other car. And I had, I didn't know. I just knew that it was like, really, this car? You, you'd like, and they're like, yeah. So I think I had like three, three-ish hours and then people stayed like uh, overtime while I was still trying to get this car out, and I'm just like, I just can't shrink this back window. They're like, well, what can you do? And I was like, I guess I can split it, and it'll just look ugly, and then you can try and sell it, I don't know, but like, I just, on, <laughs> working in those, those types of places, it's like there's always this mentality of like, the work's gotta get done no matter what. So like, the job's here, and it, it like, so you have to get it done no matter how it looks. So it's just like, you just kind of do the best that you can. Not fun. <laughs> Same thing with like, oh God, it was just, work ethic here can be funny. It's just, there were times that like, you know, if I had the flu or felt sick or something like that, it's like, no, you have to get in here. We have cars to do. It's like, okay, so you can't call and cancel anything. You always felt like there's this pressure on you to always do everything that they brought to you, no matter what. Regardless of like time or situation, it's like, it was like, oh, well, we'll do better next time. 
and then they wouldn't. So that always kind of drove me crazy. But it does force you into a lot of interesting situations that you uh, you will get better for being in, but it'll still drive you crazy. Because you never know what you're truly capable of, I guess, until like, you know, you're like, I can't do that car. Well, you have to do it. And then you just do the best you can, and then you, you, know, you get better the more you practice on stuff like that. So it's give and take in both of those situations, but uh, not super fun. I had a, uh, an inquiry on a 66 Mustang a couple days ago. And <laughs> I, I quoted it rather high. He was asking full car with the windshield, and I was like, what was it? I basically just doubled the price of a full car with a windshield, which I think is fair, but when you put it on paper, it sounds really high. Because if you're like two cars with windshields, oh, okay. But then you're like, um, is it 370, 140? It was like 750 for the whole Mustang. So that's like, that's a, that's a pretty high tint job for standard film. That's not carbon or ceramic. But it's one of those things where I'm gonna spend all day on. So I don't specialize in classics, but I'm gonna do my damnedest on it. And then hopefully it turns out great, right? That's what happened on the, uh, that's what happened on the old, old Porsche I did. I didn't even stream it. I love your old stories. Thank you. Glad they're, glad they're getting put to good use. I guess when you, when like that's just your work, you don't really think about it. Like that's just the way things are. So, but the more you talk to people, not everybody was in situations like that or, you know, if you're having to deal with something like that, you can relate. I think there's there's a fair amount of shops doing it now, but like window tinting is just it it comes from auto garages and and auto people and they sell it and they treat it like it's another car thing. When it is, but it's also it can be treated as kind of like an art. So it's like these two different types of worlds. I, I see it a little bit differently. So I try to book things like, because you can absolutely turn out a much better job with more time. And that's what I'm kind of going for, but you have to charge more for it to make it worth the time too. So it's, uh, it's tricky. It's a tricky thing to try and build up that way. You know, like painting a car. You can go to Mako, or you can have some really unique person who is just a master at painting. Like, there's so many businesses like that. I see tint as the same type of thing. Tint, vinyl, PPF, like it's all a very unique skill and can be treated that way. Or, you know, it can be uh, turned into a very high production thing that's just like turn over car after car after car. Because not everybody is looking for the perfect tint job. People are just looking for like in and out stuff. Convenience and still good for the money. We can do better. So I have to always slow down too uh, if I'm gonna stream and stuff so that it fits in really well. This wouldn't, this wouldn't work quite as much if I was trying to tin a bunch of cars in a day.
but it still it still works. Sweet. So we gotta wipe it down. Uh, we gotta stick that third brake light back, and then make sure everything's touched up, which we mostly did, and then we'll be good. Whoa. Whoa. Kevin Rogers super chatted $50, popped by right quick to say thanks for what you do, my guy. <laughs> Keep up the great work. Kevin with the 50. Holy shit, thank you. Pop by right quick. I appreciate it. It's good to have you. Guys, uh, so Kevin, real quick, uh, he is working with Tint Depot, actually, and has been trying to set up a live stream, too. So we were just talking about that earlier today. So I believe he's got Tint videos over on his channel, so you can feel free to always go over and check him out. That was a big super chat, too. Thank you. He's, <laughs> he's coming into all the problems that I've already been through. It's uh, getting this up and running in any type of uh, seamless fashion. Man, it's tough. Because GoPros are not made uh, for live streaming, really. They can. You can go right off of a GoPro to YouTube or Facebook. But if you want to tie in some of the other fun streaming stuff through OBS. They're just that you have to be super creative about. So, <laughs> I don't know. There were no videos on this. I figured a lot of this stuff out. So anybody that I can help with this kind of stuff, I'm more than happy to, uh, to talk about it. Because this is, this is as much of a hobby as it is a business for me. It's fun. It's fun to do. Your tint jobs are perfect. Thank you. I'm a little sad that the... Uh, I don't think the fog machines went off. Cannon. So, Kevin, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. Oh, good lord, did I just spill coffee? Nice, that's that's classy thing to do. Happy to support, I appreciate it. Great video on removing the Ford rear view mirror. Oh, was it the annoying one? Darn foggers, I know. That's a helpful video to have, for sure. So let's put this back. We have most things done. I guess we have to find, oh no. It should be over by the toolbox, right? The ratchet, there it is. So tighten. So we're gonna, we're just gonna kind of mosey on back here. All right, real quick ending to this. Uh, just go opposite. Tighten all those bolts back up. And then whenever that's good, you'll be good to go. Is that? No. How did that? Oh, that's annoying. Was I loosening it again? Yikes. There we go. Tighten that one, tighten this one, just tell me, yep, got that one, and then this one. There we go. 
all good. Tighten back up, then take these. One, two, three. Kia K5 with the brake light, all good. I'm very happy that these are that simple because the first one I had in here, I was like, yeah, K5, probably no big deal. It's a Kia. And then I took a peek at that back window. I had done the stingers and the other ones. And I was like, oh, uh-oh. But 10 mil, keep it slim, put it up there. All good. Easy peasy on that one. I feel like I owe you money for how much you have taught me. If I had spare change, I send it to you. Hey, I appreciate the message. It's all good. Glad I can help. There's a lot of there's a lot of people in the community that step up. And then just general YouTube and stuff like that. There's there's it's it's self-supporting, which is really nice. That's all you have to do. Pull back the headliner and loosen the bolts to make room for the tent. Whoa, work! Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Timbani super chatted $10. Amazing work as always, Tint Master. Really enjoy your videos. Keep up the Aww. great work, Matt. Call me. <laughs> Call me. Tim with a 10. Thank you. I really appreciate that message too. Glad you liked the videos. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. We literally built a business and a studio to be able to keep doing this. Now we can keep on doing it and there's nothing that's keeping us from doing it. So that's super cool. Where before it was trying to work with shops and still do other tinting. Like, <laughs> between uh, this time last year, really, a little bit before, we started in March, March of last year. Oh, God, it's August already. Um, we started, like, the studio thing out of the garage last year, and a whole year till now, like, even from this time last year, I think we had a, a notice from the city at that point and then got, got kicked out pretty much. So, dang. Yeah, we've come a long way inside of a year. It's really, really cool. Just keep at it. Dang. This thing turned out nice. Oh, it's so dark. All right. I'll give you guys a little, like, Yeah, you can't see into this thing at all. Blends in with that roof. And then they do little things on like, okay, so they changed up the key. They put all the buttons on the side, which is, it's, it's cool, it's unique. The, the running lights, look at those. Those things are nuts. They actually are brighter when you don't have the headlights on. They dim a little bit. So I took a picture without the, uh, without the headlights on, and it's just like, man, they have such a unique glow to them. It's just kind of crazy to see an Ikea, of all things. Looks like he put on, like, the other badges and stuff. Take a photo for Google reviews? Yeah, I gotta do that. I try to take pictures and, and change the thumbnail after the fact. So, uh, I, but I've been forgetting to post them on Google, though. You put the to soap in a towel or a sock, dude, not direct. <laughs> Canon. You know, when I Googled it, I saw some videos of people doing it direct. So that's why we took like five seconds of generic research. And that's what we, that's what we found. People are recommending mushing it into a rag. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. 
that would have gone better that way. All right. I love the look of the K5. The GT model has 295 horsepower to do burnouts. <laughs> Kia Base. You've been watching for a long time, I remember. Kia's making a comeback, that's for sure. Yeah, we're probably going to have a lot more of these on stream, honestly. It would probably do us well to keep that quarter window pattern. Just put it on the side somewhere. Check out our... Check out our website. We made you a surprise. Really? Hang on. All right. I'm going to pull it up. My aspect ratio on, the, on this is weird. I don't know why, but I'll pull it up. Let me, I don't know how I can change this really quick. I don't know if it matters. All right, where's the surprise? Resources, is that where it would be? No. Where, where am I looking? Scroll down, just on the, the homepage? Or is it on the resources? <laughs> Main page, scroll down. Why is undistributing your page? I don't see anything. Let me pull this over here. Refresh. In no worky. What am I looking for? Um, maybe I can open it in another browser or something. Hang on. Maybe it's staying from before. I don't know. And I use like, ugh, so dumb. Why does your computer hate you? I don't know. It's a pretty good one. What's up? Hello? <laughs> hey, what's up? Yeah, it's great. Um, so, can you, can you like control F5 or whatever it is you have to do to clear your cache for? Yeah, I'm going to try. It, but there's something when you refresh it, basically. Well, no, we gave you a spot on the home page, and we gave you your whole page, and we've got your stream on the page, and we've got some other goodies. And Whoa! <laughs> All right, hang on. We're figuring it out. Did you guys not save it? I'm opening it in a different browser. It's still not popping up. Um, incognito, maybe? Yeah, it's... Nothing seems, I don't know, nothing seems to be working. Uh, home, yeah, because I'm on the home page. Yeah, hover over shop now and see if it's, your page should be there at least. What it'll say, like Tint Studio? Yeah, it's Tint Studio recommended. All right, let me check in Chrome again. Yeah, send me a. Oh, <laughs> how do you send me a link? We're trying to figure out a website thing here. But we gave you a section on the home page too. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Um. There's glass HDG handles. Oh, God. Jose. 
Jose 78 Rios super chatted $4.99. Good job, glad everything went well. Oh, there. It's right at the top now. Okay. All right. You can t Jose, thank you so much for the five. I really appreciate it. Okay, so we found we found the page. Oh, look at that. It's all the way to the left side, too. Oh, that's nice. So, because I have to change the, I don't know, some stream stupid setting. It's only showing half of it. Sweet. Okay, thank you. I'll talk to you. Wow, look at this. All right, so we figured it out. So they said on the home page, the website looks a little a little funny right now. Um, uh, the Okay, so there's more screen when you go to the right. Uh, it's just the, the capture source. I don't know. I, I keep forgetting how to fix it. But anyways, uh, if you go to shop now, well, it's not there now. That's annoying. Anyways, it'll be right here at the top or something. So... Uh, there'll be Tint Studio recommended somewhere on here. Uh, you click on that and look at that. I'll copy the link and I'm going to post this in chat too. So at least we got here. So it's got my live stream here, which is super cool. I'm, I'd imagine that it'll update with the most recent live stream, which is super cool. And then this is a list. Oh, these are so helpful. I love this. So this is a list that they made of all the things that I use that they have available. So like the hybrid, uh, the keg setup, the different parts that you'd need, uh, dash towel, glass aid clay bars, my favorite squeegees, um, a few films, <laughs> uh, automotive starter kit. Oh, is this like, I, w I don't know if this is my recommended starter kit here, but there is a whole lot of things that I see that I like out of here. I would just change, yeah, yeah, the pouch, the pouch, but that keeps cost down. Flat out, glass aid, basically everything that I have. That's super cool. I'm going to save this link for sure. So when you guys ask me what tools that I recommend, this is definitely a good place to go. So if you ever wondered what's that thing that I was using, uh, you can go here and find out exactly what that was. That's the build your own kit. Oh, so this is a build your own kit. That's cool, too. Oh. Oh, look at the, ah, the one. What is the one thing that I said? I said the tool pouch. Look at that. You can swap out the tool pouch. So. Oh. Oh, this is so cool. OK, this is great. All right, so this is probably the best type of solution that I've ever seen for this, this problem here. So if you guys want to get a good starter kit, uh, but you're not sure what to buy, uh, they put a lot of their recommendations in here, and they give you the ability which e with each one of these drop downs. Look at that. Look at that clicker right there. Um, so you can do pouch. Uh, you can do your knife. Like, so if there's something that you know you would prefer or something you want to use differently, they give you that option in all these drop downs so you can customize your starter kit for what you want and they give you little discounts on everything too. These shorty handles, those are not cheap. So that's nice to see. That's super cool. Thank you, that's really, that's really nice. Tint Studio recommended. So if I click play here, thank you. That's oh really, my God, that's it's really me nice. right now. Tint Studio recommended. <laughs> that's awesome so hopefully this will update this is something I wanted to try and figure out too hopefully this will update every time I go live with like a recent live stream that's super cool yay they're creative I appreciate you thank you so much for doing that's cool that's really helpful I'll update a link so when I say sun distributing it'll bring people to a recommendation page that's super cool All righty. So we have to shout out some super chats. Where's my YouTube window? There it is. Give me a second. I got to go over there. Whoa! Tim! 
Tim Barney with the five. That's fun. I like when it works. Tim so Barney super chatted five dollars. Gifts that keep on giving. Party face. Party face. <laughs> Party face. Well, that is a good segue into this right now. Tim Barney, thank you so much for the five gifts that keep on giving. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for supporting the stream and also the super chat earlier. So we're going to shout out some super chats like we always do. So thank you to Tim, Jose, Tim, Kevin, uh, and, and, uh, and Jorge. Oh, and Jorge again. My name, my last name sounds funny. It, <laughs> yeah. I like keeping that text-to-speech around. So it actually helps when I'm working. So I, I like kind of hear it, and then it, it reads it a little bit more clearly with that voice. That voice is just super funny. I love when people leave emojis in it, too. And it's like, fire, fire, fire. When is the next one? Uh, what is today? Today's Wednesday. Uh, I don't think we are streaming tomorrow. Let me, let me look at the schedule here. I don't think we're streaming tomorrow, but either, either Friday or Saturday, we'll be back with another stream for sure. So things have been a little bit sketchy on, on booking, so it's like slowing down for that back to school. Uh, we're still getting a fair amount of inquiries. I just don't have anything set up to stream quite yet uh, until Saturday, so hopefully we'll get something here pretty quick. But. Uh, I have some videos uh, lined up, so we're going to be posting probably one of those tomorrow. Um, and then I also have time to film something, too. So, again, take advantage of the time. Like the uh, eBay video that we did, I would like to do more of those. So now we have some more time to do stuff like that. So thank you guys so much for all the support and hanging out. Uh, these have been a lot of fun. I'm glad this has been working out lately. This has been really good. Uh, glassy, oh no, 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 what was that? Do you use the Platinums? I do, a little bit, not very much. I use the triages over the Platinum Easy Reaches, uh, but I still have them, they come in handy. Uh, I just, I'm really choosy about how I use them because they usually scratch a little bit easier or something. Walmart tint video. I don't know what's a tint though. I have that, that car over there, but it's something like I wanted to put on my car, drive around with for a little bit, but I guess the real things we want to know is like, one, is it hazy, and two, how is the heat rejection on it? So, I don't know. We'll be back. We'll do something here soon. Uh, hopefully I'll have a video maybe ready for Sunday. That's what I would like to do, but fingers crossed. We'll see. Thank you guys for hanging out. I will see you in the next one. Expect Friday or Saturday, and in the meantime, make some money. Have a good one. Hang out in the uh, Facebook group. And I'll see you later. Goodbye.